The Chancellor's budget tomorrow is being billed as a back-to-work budget because it hopes to address some of the reasons that half a million people have left the workplace in the last few years. One of the proposals that has already been trailed today is a huge increase in what people can pay into their pensions tax-free, both in one year and over a lifetime. It's thought nearly two million people could benefit from the move, which is seen as redressing changes which drove doctors and other professionals into early retirement. Wayne Jaffe is one such doctor, and he spoke to Radio 4 last year. Due to changes that were made in the pension rules, back in about 2016, it became apparent that NHS doctors in particular, especially those towards the end of their careers who have amassed an NHS pension pot, are going to be subject to quite large tax bills. But it left me with bills totaling tens of thousands of pounds on top of my normal tax bills. And there is no way for someone in my position to mitigate against that now, apart from retiring. So I had to pay a financial advisor to do the sums. And basically, they said you'd be a mug if you carried on working past your 60th birthday. Well, Laura Souter is head of personal finance at the investment platform AJ Bell. Laura, good afternoon. Hi there. Uh, can we just start with the overview of what we now understand will be will be changed tomorrow in the budget? Yeah, so there's three different parts of the kind of pension taxation rules that are set to be changed. The first one is that lifetime limit on the amount that you can have in your pension. At the moment, it's just over a million pounds, and the rumours are that it's going to rise to 1.8 million. Um, likewise, there's a limit on the amount that you can put into your pension each year. For most people, that's 40,000 pounds, and the speculation is that that's going to increase to 60,000 pounds. And then the final part of it um, is there's a separate limit for people who've already accessed their pension, but then, for example, go back into work or want to pay into their pension again. At the moment, they're limited to putting £4,000 a year into their pension, and it's expected that that is going to increase to £10,000 a year. OK, now, given the sums that we're talking about, somebody who could put up to £60,000 into a pension every year, what sort of size group are we talking about? It's um, tough to say. There's a lot of uh, kind of estimates at the moment ranging from one to two million people. If the government actually announces this tomorrow, then we will see some exact figures on how many people it could benefit. But you're right. I mean, there's going to be lots of people out there thinking that they couldn't afford to put £40,000 a year into their pension, let alone £60,000. So it would tend to be wealthier people or those people who are nearing retirement and have perhaps neglected their pension earlier on in their working lives and have more disposable income now to kind of funnel that into their pension shortly before they retire. OK. Now, only yesterday on the programme we were hearing from a junior doctor on £14 an hour who literally just started as a junior doctor and couldn't afford the tube fare. But there is a group, and it is doctors and medics, NHS workers, who are really quite badly affected by this, isn't there? Or they seem to be disproportionately affected. Um, I was exactly. reading there was something like a third of savers who breached the annual allowance on pensions were NHS workers. So that's people who are obviously some distance into their careers. Yeah, it tends to be those more senior doctors and those people that have worked for the NHS for a long time. And because they are entitled to a very valuable defined benefit pension, um, they will be um, nearing or over the existing allowance. And that essentially means that if they take on overtime, they end up with big tax charges. And so for lots of them, they've decided to either retire earlier or just not take on those extra hours, um, which then causes a problem for NHS workforce and for them um, getting doctors into work. Laura, Laura Souter, thank you very much. Well, let's turn to Baroness Ros Altman. Uh, she was Conservative Pensions Minister from 2015 to 16. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Now, these changes were made in 2016. Do you think it's right that they are now, well, we, as we understand, tomorrow they will be reversed? Well, the, the big change that needs to be reversed is the tapered annual allowance, actually. Um, the lifetime uh, allowance was, was actually cut in 2010-11. Um, and that has caused the early retirement issue, which is a serious problem. Uh, the medical survey, the MA survey, suggested that nearly half of GPs are planning to retire over the next year or two. That is a serious problem for the most senior staff. Um, but I, I think part of the problem is the whole structure of the tax reliefs. You know, there's an annual allowance and a tapered annual allowance and a lifetime allowance and a money purchase allowance. All of this is bafflingly complicated and has had terrible side effects, which are particularly hitting the most senior staff and particularly in the public sector, the NHS, and, and also, of course, um, in, in other schemes, teachers, armed forces. Mm. They, they are all the most senior and valuable, perhaps, or most experienced uh, staff are being driven to stop work okay. or but, cut their hours. This is crazy. Right, but so one of the things that we know, we, or we understand, is that will change tomorrow, is that the annual, the limit each year that you can put into your pension will go from 40,000 to 60,000. That will address some of what you're talking about. That will help, and it will help with the most senior staff. Um, the lifetime allowance is 
the big issue for those who are taking early retirement, the way that's calculated, they are better off uh, and can avoid the tax penalty if they retire sooner rather than waiting until their normal pension age. Again, that is absolutely against what we need in terms of rebuilding the NHS. But in the wider population, uh, just changing pension rules or uh, tightening the benefit requirements, for example, won't solve the problem of the over 50s who are not working, many of whom want to work, but aren't well enough. And that needs different types of intervention. Changing the pension tax rules will be irrelevant for them because okay, but they so, won't earn enough to, for, to make a difference. Right, okay, so just to be clear, if they change the rules in the way we're talking about, will more people come back in or stay and work? More of the most senior experienced staff in the uh, NHS and other um, public services are likely to have an incentive now to keep working, whereas they would have had an incentive to be uh, right. retiring so, otherwise. So, so that's a, a good thing, number. but you want, but you want more. So it's a good thing, but you want more. Well, I think we want to help a lot more people who are over fifty, um, who are not working, who are not well, um, perhaps work part time, uh, have occupational health interventions. Um, you know, the the rules on pensions will address one part of the problem in terms of so was it a mistake NHS, was it a mistake when because you were pensions as i say pensions minister until 2016 the changes were made in 2016 was it a mistake for george osborne to, to make these changes i think it was a mistake to introduce the tapered annual allowance i think that was a terrible decision which has resulted in major problems for the nhs and loss of senior experienced staff but uh, overall i think there is a wider issue whereby the structure of all the pension tax allowances, uh, which were introduced uh, long before uh, George Osborne, also shouldn't um, remain unchanged. I think it is time for a proper reform uh, of all these allowances. If you're going to Thanks limit the amount people put in each year, don't then punish them with a lifetime allowance, but for performing well as well. Baroness Ros Altman, thank you very much.